All right, students, you are on your form page in your sketchbook, okay? We are going to break down simple shapes and turn those two-dimensional shapes into three-dimensional forms. So at the top of your page right now, we're going to use all of this space, so be mindful as you're filling it in. We're going to go ahead and write shapes. And underneath of that, you can go ahead and write 2D. Then I would like an arrow. Go ahead and write forms. And write 3D underneath of that. Now it's going to be full on flat paper, so it's going to be an implied. It's going to be an implied three-dimensional form, right? Yeah. We recognize that word implied from when we were talking about texture. Now the first shape we're going to look at, and I want you to draw along with me, and you can pause the video at any point. The first one we're going to look at is a square. So do your best to draw four even sides to create a square. I'm going to have you start by making an A because I'm going to teach you two different ways. Who can raise their hand and tell me what is going to be the name of a square that's three-dimensional? Cameron. Say it louder, honey. A cube. Is she correct? Yeah. Yeah, good job. So we are. We're going to take this simple square. And we know there's more than one right way to do it. And we're going to turn it into a cube. The first way I'm going to teach you is going to involve some overlapping. I'm going to overlap and create another square inside of it. Okay? And for the sake of teaching and getting this down in your sketchbook so you can refer back to it as a reference when you're making it again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another color. Look at what happens. We're going to talk a lot about parallel lines, which you guys are familiar with from math class, correct? Do parallel lines run into each other? No, they do not. So this line here, and this line here are now parallel, right? Do you see how these lines are connecting those edges? And we have a cube that we can see through, right? Okay. That is option one for making a cube. Okay. Then let's go ahead. If you need to pause the video, please do. We're going to take that square, and this time we're going to take those parallel lines, and run them at an angle again, our viewpoint. Could we go the opposite way if we wanted to? Absolutely, but the main component is to make sure that they're going the same way. If you're having them go this way... Just make sure they're all going that way. Okay. Now, artists, I'm going to challenge you with your artist minds and artist eyes to think about in real life, besides a box, what else do we turn these cubes into? Any guesses? Those parallel lines. These lines are parallel to these lines. These ones are parallel to these lines. Anybody see a present? Yeah. Turn our other sides up a little bit higher. Anybody see... 
Ava, what do you see? What would your artist's eyes, if you could add detail to that cube, what would you turn it into? Oh, yes. Maybe you almost go more into a rectangular prism with it. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep being inspired. I'm going to zoom out here for a second. Now, on this form page, you're going to have a nice reference point for when you are drawing realistic scenes for me, okay? So, number two. Let's go ahead and focus in on a triangle. And we have two different styles of triangles. We have the triangles with all the same length on each side, right? Oops, sorry, my mask kind of fuzzed that. And some are two sides of the same length and one is shorter, right? So those are our two shapes. Let's go ahead and start off with the one where we try to have the lengths be all the same on all three sides. What do we want to turn that into, boys and girls? A pyramid. Okay. I'm going to take and bring this down at an angle. That finishing line right there. Okay. Now what's fun is that even with this, if you started to combine your three-dimensional forms, that cube, uh-huh, or the top of a bell tower, so many options, right? Okay, let's go ahead and go to B. <clears throat> nice job so far. Remember to pause at any point in time. This time, we're going to go back to parallel lines, right? What are we going to call this one? What is this going to be when we're done? A triangular? Very good. So these two lines are parallel. Now I need one parallel to this one to connect. I'd say the biggest mistake I see kiddos make is when they go to make it, we got to go nice and slow. They maybe make the line not parallel. Does that have a different feel? Yeah. So these two eventually would run into each other, right? So we want to keep those lines parallel to each other. All right, zoom them back out. Three, we're going to combine shapes. We're going to combine two shapes. All right, boys and girls, now we're going to be combining two of our shapes to create a new three-dimensional shape, okay? Now, train your earnest eyes because sometimes there's illusions when we are creating um, a three-dimensional shape in the way we create it using shapes. For example, think of something round like a cylinder, okay? Let's think about a cylinder, <clears throat> and this isn't a perfect cylinder. I can see it's a little smaller, but we know this is a circle on the top, right? Um, when you are viewing it from the side like that, though, versus the top, the top, if we look directly down, we see the circle, right? From the side, we see more of an oval. So we create that illusion for our viewers. And then on the bottom, we're able to go ahead and um, whether it's a rectangle or whatever it might be. But because this is rounded, the bottom line is going to have a little curve to it as well. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at that and go ahead and do our best to break it down 
and draw it so that you're able to refer back to the sheet at a later time when you're drawing and make your next drawing that much more realistic, doing implied three-dimensional forms. Alright, we're going to start with that rectangle. Remember, nice light artist hands. I'm going to put a circle there, but I'm going to put a question mark because it depends on the viewpoint. Then when we combine these two together, if we're looking from the side, like if you're looking at a can of pop or you're looking at a ice cream container, We know it's important to start on the very edges, bring those lines down, and curve that bottom line to make it look more realistic. And we've created a cylinder. Now let's take this idea of combining two shapes and let's try All right. As you can see, bringing those lines in made this look even a little bit more like that paint cup. So next up, we're going to take a look at two more shapes. Same idea. What's your viewpoint? Are you sitting across looking at it? Are you looking down at it? Okay, all those things you need to take into consideration. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle and question mark. Okay, so we're taking a triangle plus one of these two. Now your imaginations are probably already deciding what you would want to turn this um, cone into, right? How many of you are putting scoops of ice cream on top? Or turning this next one into a birthday cap. Okay, these are simplistic shapes that we've turned into a three-dimensional form, an implied one, that you probably have been doing some of this. I just want to challenge you as we move forward to do as many three-dimensional forms in your drawing as possible. It's going to give that much more detail and have it look that much more realistic for your viewers. And boys and girls, it's fun. We talk about how art is best friends with a lot of other um, disciplines, right? Whether it's history or math. <laughs> We've been talking a lot about parallel lines today, right? So. You are using your left and your right brain today. So know that if this feels challenging, it's because it is. And it takes lots of practice, just like any other discipline. All right, let's go ahead now. Let's go ahead now and take a look at a circle and the idea of turning that circle into a sphere, okay? So example one, that word value. You've been using the art element word value when we've been making still lifes in the art room. And actually, anytime we do highlights and shadows, we're gonna spend a whole day focusing in on value. But for today, I want you to take the idea of value, those really dark colors and those really light colors, and think about how adding value to this circle is gonna make it look and what's going to happen. I'm making the sun up in the corner I'm going to go ahead and make that circle, okay? Think about where that highlight would be. Think about what this is going to turn into, if it's going to look flat or if it's going to look like implied, right? There's that word again, implied, if it's going to look more realistic. Now, because it is round, I want to make sure that I am using lines that are curved or circle motion to fill in. This takes time. You're gonna use different pressures with your pencil to help it look more realistic. And you're gonna go ahead and fill that space in. Stay very conscious of where the highlight is and where the shadow is. We know that if you have a blending stump, you'll be welcome to use that. Or your finger works in a pinch. 
But as you can see, I'm starting to fill that space in. And I've got the one side a little darker. And now I'm casting that shadow. And we can see where the highlight is in the shadow, right? If you need to go back and use the, your eraser as a, as a tool, you sure can if you need to lighten things up. Or if you need to smudge it with your, with your fingers to help move that pencil light around, you sure can as well. Okay, just for kicks, we'll turn it into a bowling ball for you. All right, next up is B. This time we're gonna take that circle and I'm gonna challenge you to think about everyday objects that you view from the side. It might actually be a cylinder you're viewing, but where that circle would be so important. I'm give you a couple different examples here. Just seeing a little bit from the edge. These extra details are going to pull it all together. So technically this tire would be a cylinder, right? Now let's go ahead and think about when we cut an orange in half. Giving those details so our viewers have lots of clues. You might also think of a bowl. Again, we know on top is actually more of a circle, but I drew it an oval from the viewpoint. All right, nice job, boys and girls. I'm going to challenge you to create a picture of your very own using as many of these three-dimensional forms as you can to create the picture. This is gonna be a little example of a piece of pie, okay? A piece of pie, and to help make it look realistic, you'll see me curve some of the lines. We can still keep it really simple, okay? Nice, light artist hands. Think about the angle and the view. I don't have a piece of pie in front of me, so I am pulling off from my memory. Let's go ahead and get some extra details on that crust. Oh, you want whipped cream? You got whipped cream. Now this is gray, right? This is good. We can tell it's pie. Let's add a plate to it. Now again, we want to kind of imply that it is a three-dimensional. Maybe you want to have a cup of hot cocoa or cider or tea. But you can see how all of a sudden I've taken the idea of a simple drawing and made it look more realistic, more third grade level. All right, boys and girls, think about a picture that you can draw for me in your free draw section of your um, sketchbook for my third graders. For my other students that are checking this video out, you may go ahead and just get another blank sheet of paper. And you'll see I gave an example of a camping scene. Turn those artist eyes on. Look for those three-dimensional forms. Birthday, a castle, um, a farm. You can probably think of even more. But I want you to go ahead, be inspired, and draw me an implied picture filled with three-dimensional forms. All right, thanks for tuning in today, boys and girls.